Hello guys and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. Today I'm very proud to bring you an awesome game called A Valley Without Wind by Arson Games. Uh, this one's been making some waves on YouTube. You, if you haven't heard of it yet, you're probably going to hear a lot about it soon. It's a uh, procedurally generated RPG platformer metroidvania goodness. Uh, pretty much everything I like in my games. And uh, when you see what this game's about, you'll see it, it does it all really well. Uh, setting up the sort of story and what's going on in the game world on the menu here, and we're going to take a quick look at what the game has to offer. So, uh, much like Terraria, you start out by creating a world, and I'm going to leave it all set up pretty much generic. Uh, there's a bunch of different control schemes, and you can actually set up the combat and platforming difficulty independent of each other, which is kind of awesome. So if you prefer a harder jumping uh, challenge or a harder combat challenge, then the game's ready to provide that. Now you get to pick a character, but the game reminds you at the top here, don't get too attached to your character. It's not a question of if they die, but when. Rather than controlling a single character, you control a series of heroes who set out to better the lot of their settlement. And heroing is dangerous business. So we can look at our stats here, and... Like the game says, it's not super important, I guess, which uh, character we start out with. Uh, it's just more matter of preference more than anything. I'm going to pick somebody with uh, high attack. So we're going to try uh, Abriella Tichi. Sounds good. So the game's going to throw together a world for us to explore on the fly. And just like that, we're off. Now, there's a lot to learn about this game. It's not the most simple thing in the world, but it's very rewarding. Uh, it actually does a pretty good job of teaching you everything you need to know as you go. Now, uh, the way they do it is kind of inventive also. You'll actually run across gravestones of other fallen uh, compatriots here and there. It's actually going to tell you why they died, and sort of like Dark Souls, using that information is going to let you figure out more about how to play the game. So, uh, yeah, this one's telling you extraordinarily brave, extraordinarily impatient. She didn't even take the time to check her health status or what spell gem she had equipped for easy access. All she had to do was look in the bottom left corner and hover over anything she wasn't sure about. And there we go. We learned we just picked up Fire Touch, which is automatically mapped to left click, as it says right here in the bar. And I can actually do some tree punching, Minecraft style, and accumulate some platforms. And you'll see why that's important in just a moment. There's all manner of useful, interesting stuff to observe on the UI here. We've got a nice map up in the top left corner with things marked for our convenience. And we've got our inventory slots on the lower left as well as our MP and our health. And then some more advanced stuff, uh, which we will get to later. Here's another gravestone saying about uh, somebody who's crushed under a pile of crates while trying to harvest some granite. And I'm not going to have that same problem, because, you know, I read these things. No crushing for me. Got my granite. Damn it. So I probably don't need this many trees. I'm going a little resource happy here. And what do we have in this box? Ah, it's wooden platforms. Now these are integral for exploration because it means that you can actually jump up to higher areas than you could normally access. And I just got a Featherweight enchantment. And what that's telling me is if I press the X key, I can actually drop that onto my legs, and all of a sudden I am immune to falling damage. So much like uh, when you assemble Samus's armor in Super Metroid, you're going to be doing some of the same things in A Valley Without Wind, in a sort of less linear, more uh, freeform 
exploration based path. So yeah, I probably don't need that up anymore. Now this gravestone is telling me that this water is actually acid, so I need to be careful when I cross it. Uh, and you can see it actually automatically puts whatever's in your first two in left click and right click respectively, so your second uh, inventory slot automatically becomes that. And I can just drop some platforms and easily cross this. So maybe later I will end up with some sort of like acid water immunity or something, I'm not sure. And then I'll be able to further explore that. So I'm already a pro at placing platforms and things, that's not too interesting, but why don't we check out a building. So pressing E we can actually enter a building and take a look at what's available within. I just got a minor inner light enchant. That sounds like a useful thing to have. Uh, Mitz light. That's great. I could use some light. So now, when I go down into these very dark cavernous areas, I can actually tell what the hell I'm doing. Which, uh, my first run through the game, I didn't actually notice that, so I'm really glad that I found that this time. Not sure how I didn't notice it, but I guess I just forgot to look. So you can actually go in on these rooms. This one in particular, uh, this is going to tell me that there's no re reason to ever go into a destroyed room. So we don't need to stay there. Living rooms and other rooms, you never know, maybe there'll be something useful there. Now this is a really ambitious game, there's a lot of reasons besides just the, you know, procedurally generated stuff. They also made an effort to make sure that the game is going to pretty much last forever. Uh, and what I mean when I say that, and I just picked up some pretty important stuff, but I'll talk about that later. Uh, what I mean when I say that is that they've actually committed, uh, the developers have committed to actually creating post-game content, uh, and post-release content, I mean. So when we finish this game, or, huh, that's the other thing, you can't really finish it. Uh, but when you get to, you know, whatever point you think feels like you're sort of starting to get tired of it, there's going to be more content. Uh, but the game in and of itself is going to actually be procedurally generating more content when you finish every area. So you're going to be able to keep playing this pretty much indefinitely. And when you couple that with the multiplayer elements and all the exploration to do, I, I can't see why anyone would ever pretty much stop playing this game. Uh, as long as you're into this style, I can't imagine there's a reason. Like, just you'll just keep going. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, for a mere 15 bucks, you can have an infinite game. Imagine. So I actually picked up some upgrade stones, and what I can do with those is... Well, what do you know? Upgrade. I can uh, pick which attribute I put my stuff towards, and right now... Phew, I'm thinking... Let's buy an upgrade to our attack, and let's also buy an upgrade to health. Why not? And it looks like it's getting dark outside. I'm obsessed with logs, so let's just keep collecting logs and bushes and all kinds of stuff. And see what's over here. Here lies David Wellesley. Red Slime got him. Here lies John Parkinson. Yep, Red Slime. And here lies Wendy Flighter. Seriously, people need to stay back from that red slime. It's a menace. So I like this sort of like a tongue-in-cheek sort of re self-referential bit of humor in there. Now, I don't have too much to do with attacking this, so I gotta be pretty careful. I don't have uh, a very strong anything, really. Now, I can do a... Storm Dash, that's not really going to help me. Get my speed boots. Now, can I go over here at all? No, it looks like that. that's pretty much a dead end up there. So I'm going to have to somehow take out this slime. Whoa. Elemental resistance against my current spell. I want to use a spell of a different element. If I don't need, If I don't have one, then I'm going to have to find one. For now, bravely run away. Okay. I'm a little sad about that. I was hoping to go in that direction, but, you know, discretion's the better part of Valor, right? So, where can I go? 
Well, let's go back in the apartments. I think there was another spot. Ah, exactly. There's a vent shaft right here, which by cleverly placing uh, one of these platforms, I can actually access. And what do you know? Here we go. We've got a ball lightning spell. Now that's a pretty good thing to have, so I'm actually going to put that on my left click. That way now, I can shoot. So now let's go give that red slime a little bit of a challenge. Shouldn't be anything to beat now. Whoa, we've got these guys all over the place. Beautiful. Wasn't even hard. Just gotta bring the right tools to the fight. Alright, so... what's up here? Some kind of a crystalline dude. Now this is an Alari stone. And he happens to be extremely rude. Uh, so yeah, we can't really do much with him yet. He just wants to fight. Not fight, but just be standoffish. What's going on over here? Slimes. Every spell is associated with an element, air, fire, earth, water, light, or entropy. Entropy is an element you don't see too often. I like it. And another thing I like is actually the art style. Is Oh! Another elemental resistance. This one looks like he's resistant to lightning, so I guess I'm not going to mess with him. I'm just going to say that I, I really like the art style. It's uh, sort of this combination of very naturalistic, sort of modified photography type looking things. Like, very textural. Whoa, that was probably really dumb. Alright. I think I'm okay. And those green things uh, are health. As long as I can hit this guy. Whoa! But uh, it's got pretty much the whole package. The art style is beautiful, it's got some lovely music accompaniment, the UI is very well thought out, and the game is nearly endless. So, uh, pretty good deal, I would say. And there's tons and tons of stuff to explore, tons of stuff to unlock, there's a whole achievement system to it. Like I said before, there's multiplayer. And this is a game I'm probably going to be playing quite a bit more of uh, with my YouTube partner Anza. Well, I'm sure hopefully you guys know by now. And we're going to try this game out and see how far we can make it. Oh, I accidentally mapped one of my skills to the wrong side there. I meant to put the fire spell on three. Yeah, there can be a little bit of tension when you're fighting these guys and some of the stuff's going on in real time. you got to be pretty careful there. Oh, didn't really mean to put that there, but sure. So I'm collecting more granite. Can I do anything with that mushroom? Oops. That looks like it. But there's a great sense of mystery, there's a great sense that there's a lot going on in this game, and it's certainly in-depth, like there's a lot to figure out, and I mean with a little bit of time, and it doesn't take long, like maybe a half an hour time investment to figure out what's really uh, sort of the, the path you need to take to progress, and you'll find this is quite rewarding. So, uh, probably a fine spot to give it a, a rest at this point, but I would say definitely highly, highly recommended. Check this game out, A Valley Without Wind. You can purchase it right from Steam, uh, $15, and it's, uh, was on sale for the initial launch week. So unfortunately I think it is a little too late for that, but it might go on sale again at some point. Regardless, don't worry about the sale, just pick it up now. It's already been a few updates, developer plans on supporting it for a long time. Just go get it. Alright, thanks very much for watching guys, and I hope you have an outstanding night.